amen. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, dearly beloved, and uh, I want to welcome you to today's online Bible study, amen, our Digging Deep service, where we dig into the Word of God, and the Lord always blesses us and shows us new things that will bring praise and glory to His holy name. As you join us this evening, God will bless you, God will cause your joy to be full, He will uplift you. And it will cause there to be a turnaround. There will be helpers that will come your way in the mighty name of the Lord. I want to bless the name of the Lord, our Savior, for another glorious opportunity to receive from Him tonight. God has given us so much blessings, so much blessings. And all that we can do or the least that we can say is thank you, Father. I pray that the resurrection power of God will transform it will cause wonderful and glorious miracles to happen in your life and your joy will be full in the mighty name of Jesus. God will send you helpers. Amen. It will send you helpers from far. It will send you helpers from near. Helpers that he by himself has prepared for your own glory. They will locate you and your joy will be full in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight, as we continue in part three, of the series God my helper we shall be focusing on categories of help or classification of help that's what I'm going to focus on tonight and very quickly I'll take my Bible reading from Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 it says I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for that glorious opportunity to come before you tonight. Indeed, you have chosen us. Indeed, you have equipped us. Indeed, you have helped us. You have caused us to come out of darkness and be in your marvelous light. Even tonight, as we hear your word, let your word help us. Let your word satisfy us. Let your word transform us. Let your word come alive in our situations. Let your word do us good. And let our joy be full. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So very quickly, I'll just run through a recap of what we've done so far in this series. Amen. We've done part one and we've done part two. And we started by describing what help is. And we said the help is making it easier or possible for someone to do something by offering one service uh, or resources. The one who provides help will have to spend his or her resources for the benefit of the recipients. Therefore, help involves um, benefiting from someone's resources, from, from support and assistance, all working together to favor you. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. We continued, we made it very clear that everybody needs help. Amen? And no one can succeed in the journey of life without one form of help or the other. We also identify that compassion is the ingredient that propels help from the giver to the receiver. And without compassion, amen, without compassion, help will not take place. Amen. This is why many people who are in dire need of help, amen, may not find it because the compassion, the ingredient called compassion may be lacking and therefore no one is propelled to help such a fellow. So, for you to receive help, there must be some level of compassion. Praise the name of the Lord. We say compassion comes from God. 
Amen. And left for man, man will rather not help. Because man has a very selfish attitude, very greedy, self-centered. But when a man begins to follow the way of God, there's an element of compassion that is deposited into the spirit of man. And that compassion comes from God. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. It talks about God's mercy that we enjoy on a daily basis on the back of his compassion because his compassion it doesn't fail that's why we can enjoy the message of god on a daily basis i pray for you that every day of your life you will be a beneficiary of god's mercy of god's compassion in the mighty name of jesus just like david said in psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 he says i will look up to god look up to the heavens look up to the hills for where comes my help? In other words, he was trying to remind us that help truly comes from God. Amen? It's, God can use a man. God can use a situation. God can even use your enemies to help you. But the originator of help or the chief helper is God Almighty. And we concluded by looking at some of the areas that we can get help. We said we can get help in the area of fear. We can get help in the area of com com um, um, oppression, we need help in the area of provision, we need help in the area of performance, we need help in, in, in our health, you know, and healing. A lot of people are expectant of divine healing. Amen. We need help in the area of supernatural strength to be able to, to get victory over the devices of the enemy. We need help in the area of fruitfulness. Amen. So that we can be fruitful in our bodies, we can be fruitful in business, we can be fruitful in our education, we can be fruitful in all that we have to do in our careers, in our destiny. We need to be fruitful. We also need the help in the area of trouble. Amen. In fact, the word of God tells us that God in Psalm 146, verse 1 and 2, it says, God is the ever present help. Amen. In time of need, in time of trouble. We need the help. Any time of trouble, and of course, we need help when we seek direction. Where do we go? How do we do it? Which direction should we face? What is the right way to go? We need help in all these areas, and God is ready to help us. Praise the name of the Lord. Last week, we also talked about help again. We looked, you know, about how we can get help from God by asking Him. We were able to describe that asking is different from complaining. Because complaining, you might evaluate the situation, but you are just grumbling, you are making noise, you are looking at it, it's dissatisfying. You know, you rumble and rumble, but you haven't really asked anything. And we said, look, one of the sure ways of getting help from God is by asking Him. And we talked about how we can ask Him. Amen? We went further to talk about how do we ask Him. And we said that we should ask him, in asking him, we should be precise. Precise. Not complaining, not murmuring, amen, not beating around the bush. But we should be precise and definite about what we want God to do. So we should ask him. We also said we should ask with thanksgiving, amen. We were talking about getting anything from God. God always appreciates those who thank him. So we should ask with thanksgiving. Praise the name of the Lord. We should allow and receive a, a help from the Holy Spirit. We should allow the Holy Spirit to help us in asking. Because we don't even know how to pray. We also talked about prayer. That prayer is indeed asking. You know. And to ask a right, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. So we should allow the Holy Spirit to help us in asking God. We also said that in our asking, we must be expectant. Amen. When we are expectant, we are able to to do some certain things because we are believing we are expectant we are hopeful therefore there are certain actions that we can go ahead and take amen so that is all what we talked about by asking and finally we said that we should be persistent we should ask till your joy is full jesus christ said so in john 16 and verse 24 that I ask till your joy is full so we said that we should continue to ask don't get tired don't get overwhelmed but stay in a place of asking god 
and acts to your joy is full. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So tonight we are continuing part three and we shall be focusing on classifying the help that comes our way. Amen. We are trying to find out how these helps may be, you know, placed into categories. I will talk about the categories and we'll talk about how we can also, you know, go ahead and get some of this help. So we're going to look at help that comes from God. David said in Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, which we read, My help comes from the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Help flows from the place of compassion. Compassion is an ingredient that comes from the Spirit of God. We have said all this before. Praise the name of the Lord. So in categorizing our help, amen, which we are going to go into straight away, number one, we have obligational help. Obligational help. Just like the word implies, this is a category of help that we enjoy out of compulsion, compulsion from those that are responsible for us. Especially when we are very much dependent. Amen. For example, the type of help we enjoy from our parents or those who are parental figures over us. You know, our biological parents, even our spiritual parents. The type of help when you're small, your parents are responsible to give you everything that you need to grow. They cater for you, they pamper you, they provide for you, they help you to stand on your feet. Amen. That kind of help is obligational help. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. There is also the help that is humanitarian in nature. Humanitarian help. Amen. We are talking about the categories of help. There is humanitarian help. This is the help that is born out of humanitarian assistance due to natural disasters, the effects of war, and things such as, you know, terrible things. Amen. Flood. There are this crisis. There is earthquake. People are losing their homes, losing their house, losing the basic needs of a human being. Food, clothing, and shelter. And people try to help. Amen? Humanitarian. When you see fellow human beings being deprived of basic things, food, clothing, and shelter, there is a general attempt from well-meaning people to provide some certain form of of assistance that is humanitarian help now in Matthew 25 verse 35 to 40 Matthew 25 35 to 40 I'll just read really so you can hear it by yourself he says for well, I was hungry and you gave me food Jesus Christ won't speak it he says I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in I was naked and you clothed me I was sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came to me then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? When did we see you thirsty and we gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and we took you in? Or naked and we clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and we came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, As shortly I say to you, Inasmuch as you do this unto the least of my brethren, you have done it to me humanitarian help amen the more the, the way that you you see people that i need of the basic things of life food clothing roof over their head you know those basic things and you help them that is the category of humanitarian help praise the mighty name of god number three category of help is compassionate help amen and from here downwards is what everybody is looking for compassionate help now compassionate help is help that you enjoy on the grace of compassion speaking through the life of the one who helps you in other words compassion that comes from god amen and that spirit of god is in the life of someone and out of that compassion they look at you and they help you Praise the name of the Lord. Compassion comes from God. Amen. And anyone with the true spirit of God will be moved by the compassion he has from God to render help to you any time of need. 
We have seen so many people that are in need. Everybody looks at them and pities them and say, Oh, what a pity. Oh, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, oh, so sorry. But they don't help you. They just say, Oh, they pity you and they, they look as if they are sympathizing, but no help comes from them. Why? Because there is a lack of compassion in their hearts. So, compassionate help flows out of the Spirit of God inside of a man that allows you to have compassion and moves to help you. When compassion is lacking, many people may sympathize with you or sympathize with the one that needs help, but no one will move to provide any form of assistance. Remember, when we started talking about the help of God, we described help as someone that will spend his resources, he will sacrifice, and he will, you know, he will displease himself to please you. So anywhere that you get help from, it is sacrificial. And without compassion, they cannot be sacrificed. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Remember that help entails sacrifice, support and resources. And the one who provides help is sacrificing something to help you. Now look at Luke chapter 10, verse 30 to 37. Luke 10, 30 to 37. Then Jesus answered and said, this is a story of someone who was trying to be very smart. He, you know, he tried to, you know, he was trying to uh, test Jesus. He wanted to see, you know, uh, who is my neighbor, uh, which, what is the commandment of God. And he said, should I love my neighbor as myself? Jesus said, yes, that's it. And then I said, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered with this parable. He said, then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of all his clothing wounded him and departed leaving him half dead he was robbed he was maimed and all his possessions stolen now by chance a certain priest came down that road and when he saw him he passed by on the other side surprisingly a priest saw him he crossed the road and he passed by likewise a levite when he arrived at the place, he came, looked, and passed by on the other side. Amen. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Underline the word compassion. He had compassion. Amen. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own animal brought him into an inn and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to them, take care of him, whatever more you spend, when I come again I will repay you. So, which of these three do you think was neighbor to the man who fell among the thieves? And the man answered, and he said and he said, he who should mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. In other words, compassion will enable you to show help or to provide help to someone. The priest who is a custodian of the things of God had no compassion. He saw the man, maybe he pitied him, shook his head and he left. The Levite who is committed and dedicated to God to the service of God, one who expected, oh, these people, you know, they will carry out the things that they need to do. He saw him, sympathized with him, shook his head, and he left. But the Samaritan, he had the spirit of God, and he showed compassion. It was compassion that moved him to carry out help. He put him on his animal, just like put him in his vehicle, took him to a place of treating, they treated him, he paid for it, he deposited money, keep on treating him, even if you spend money I've given you, don't worry, I will send the rest on the balance. That is help based on compassion. I pray for you that God will send men who have compassion, women who have compassion your way to assist you in the day of your need in the mighty name of Jesus. The next category we're going to look at is divine helpers. Amen. Divine helpers. We have talked about four categories of help. We've talked about obligational help. 
We've talked about humanitarian help. We've talked about compassionate helpers or compassion help. Now we are looking at divine help. And this is where everyone wants to belong to. This is a special category. Divine helpers are those that God has prepared specially, specifically for a positive and glorious assignment in your favor. In other words, God has arranged them, organized them, equipped them, amen, giving them a specific instruction to come your way and assist you, taking you to the very top. That is divine helpers. That's why everybody prays for divine helpers. Because you see, divine helpers are prepared. They are prepared for you. They are specifically and specially prepared for you. Everyone that we get help from God needs a divine helper. The one that God has arranged. The one that we fulfill what God has said. The one that will not rest until they come your way. Divine helpers. You know, anything called divine is something that has to do with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It has to do with the spirit realm. And those people that are divine helpers have been prepared in the realm of the Spirit. They come manifesting physically and they locate you specifically to help you. They do not rest until they fulfill what God has commanded them. They are the helpers that are reliable. Amen? Not the type that saw the wounded man, the man that was attacked by thieves and they crossed by the road the other side and went their way. No! The Samaritan is a divine helper. I pray that every one of us from far and from here, we will receive our Samaritan, our divine helper, that will help us to get to a level of joy in all areas of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. These are the ones that looked for you and said to you, God has sent me to help you. Those are divine helpers. Amen. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 9 to 15. Genesis 18, 9 to 15. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? Now, this story is about Abraham. He was sitting in front of his house. And three angels who were passing as men, they passed by. Abraham, by I don't know how he did it, but he got understanding quickly. He rushed to them and said he wants to uh, feed them. Oh, please let me give you something to eat. And you can continue on your journey. Take water, wash your feet, you know, do all that. Call Sarah's wife, quickly prepare something for them to eat. Amen. And they, eat, they were eating. It was while they were eating, they now said, Then they said to him, They now said to Abraham, Where is your wife Sarah? So he said, Yeah, in the tent, in the house. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah was listening to the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, <laughs> shall I have pleasure? Amen. My Lord being old also, how can we come together and, you know, it is now we're going to have, we now become pregnant, and give birth at this old age, everything is dead. But Sarah, but uh, and the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Say, Shall I surely be a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will turn to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. Long and short of the whole story is that that, the, that singular act of Abraham connecting with those three angels, divine men, divine helpers, it brought about their son Isaac that they have been waiting for for so many years. They waited and waited and waited and when the divine helpers came, their help, what God had promised them, came into materialization. Divine help. Divine helpers are prepared specifically for you. I pray that you will receive your divine helpers in this season, 
in this amount of Ebenezer, they will locate you, they will find you, you will not miss them. You will be at the right time, and you will be at the right place at the right time, you will locate them, you will be sensitive, and you will do what you need to do for there to be a divine connection so that your help will not pass you by in the name of Jesus. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Now, this brings me to the conclusion for tonight. What can you do to attract divine help from God? What can you do? Amen? Because all what we are looking for is divine help. Amen? I know I am looking for divine help. And I know that you too, you are looking for divine help. A help that is prepared by God for a specific thing in your life. And you see, you can keep on getting divine help. Help in all areas. In your health, your marriage, your business, education, your projects, in your destiny, over your children, over your marriage, over your spouse, over your future, over the works of your hands. You keep getting divine help. Amen. What do you need to do? What do we, you and I, what can we do to attract divine help from the Lord? Number one, obedience to God. Obedience to God. Everybody knows that a fellow that disobeys you, a guy or a lady that is stubborn, that will not follow your instruction, it will be difficult for you to help that fellow. Just ordinary as human beings. For example, your place of work, you have people that they are working under you. The one that is so stubborn, we always come late, always tell lies, always give excuses, we don't want to work. Will you help that fellow? Will you appraise that fellow for promotion? You will not. Amen? Obedience to God's word. When we obey God's word, we God, he attracts us to God. He endears us to God. Psalm 147 verse 11, 147 in the book of Psalm verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. Amen? Let's not deceive ourselves. You cannot be disobeying God and expect divine help. Who is the divine that is going to help you? When you do not obey him, you, mis you, are, you are misbehaving, you take him for granted, you do not fear God, you can't get divine help. Amen? Divine help. Amen? He says in Isaiah 119, he says, you are willing and obedient. What do you say you will do? You will eat the good of the land. Obedience is key to attract the help that comes from God, which is divine. God expects us to obey him and to please him. This in itself draws us closer to God. Praise the name of the Lord. What else can you do? Amen. To receive or attract divine help. Number two, total commitment. Total commitment. When you show full and total commitment to God and his will, it attracts help from above. Amen. Total commitment involves fulfilling God's will sacrificially. Sacrificially. This was the testimony of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. Acts 10, verse 1 to 4. The Bible says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. And about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in the vision an angel of God coming to him, saying to him, Colinius, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, and the angel said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Amen. Because of the commitment of Colinius, if God sent help to him, when you read that whole story in Acts chapter, uh, chapter 10, you will find out that God had to prepare Peter gave him a vision, disabused his mind, changed his outlook, letting him know that the Gentiles are not a cause people, and he sent him to the house of the Gentile to go and save him. That is what we call divine help. Amen? God sent Peter. Peter that was always condemning the Gentiles, oh, these ones are unclean people, he had to disabuse his mind, cleanse him and send him to the house of Colinus, save him and saved his household out of commitment. Commitment attracts divine help from above. Number three, very quickly, continue in good works. Continuing in good works. When you continue to do good works, amen, it's another way 
of attracting divine help. When you continue in good works, he opens the books of remembrance for you. You keep on doing good, you keep on doing good, you keep on doing good. Remember, when we talked about um, help, or we talked about rendering help, or doing good, it is sacrificial. It takes your time, it takes your resource, it takes your effort, it takes your money. Good works is sacrificial. And you keep on doing it, keep on doing it. It will open the book of remembrance. One day, God will just remember you. I said, this is my son, this is my daughter, you have been doing good. Do you know that's what happened to Cornelius? God remembered him. He kept, he said he was giving arms generously. Giving arms generously. Giving arms generously. And God remembered him. Amen. Continuing in good work will attract divine help for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 16. Hebrews 13, 16. He said, but do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Also, one of my favorite scriptures in 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro, to and fro throughout the whole world, the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Those that continue to do good works. God is searching for us. God is searching for you. As you continue to do good work, God is searching for you. He wants to show himself strong on your behalf. And what does that mean? He wants to help you. Amen. And anyone that God shows himself strong on his behalf, just know that your case is settled because he will provide divine help for you and your story will change and your glory will manifest. I pray that will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Number four, quickly, what you need to do to attract divine help, demonstration of faith. You must demonstrate your faith. You must put your faith into action. Activation of your faith. Your faith must be activated. This was what happened to the widow in Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. She activated her faith. When the prophet Elisha told her to do some things that look absurd, look stupid, look funny. She did it. She did it out of expectation. She did it in faith and the result was glorious. She came out of poverty, she paid her debt and she was never poor again. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Demonstration of faith will attract divine help your way in the name of Jesus. You see, no, remember what it says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It is impossible to please God when there is no faith. And if you are coming to God, amen, you must be ready to trust in Him and believe that He's able to do it for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And this brings me to the final uh, point, which is point number five. How can we attract divine help? By asking Him. Amen? By asking Him. By asking Him. You need to ask Him. Just before we talk about asking Him, I also want to chip in one more point, which is a life of worship, a lifestyle of worship. If you can have a lifestyle of worship, you will attract God's attention. Anyone that attracts God's attention will get divine help. Amen? A lifestyle of worship entails a life of thanksgiving to God. It entails a life of appreciation for what God has done, what God is doing, and what He will do in the future. It entails a life that is prayerful. A life of putting God first in all that you do. A life of praise. This, a very good example, is found in Acts chapter 16, 25 and 26. Acts 16, 25 and 26. Talking about Paul and Silas. They went out for evangelism. They were preaching the word of God. And in the process, there was a lady with an evil spirit that, you know, was talking about, it was just distracting them. Oh, this is the children, the son of, uh, these are the men of God. You know, they were, they, were, they were distracting them. And Paul got annoyed and cast out that evil spirit. Meanwhile, the owner of the girl, or the custodian of the girl, was using that evil spirit for divination, for fortune telling, and making money out of it. So they got annoyed and said, wow, you have taken away my livelihood. You know, and they got Paul and Silas, beat them up, and threw them in prison. And this did not deter them. Because they had a lifestyle of worship. A lifestyle that gave thanks to God. They appreciated God. 
right there in the prison, they prayed and they began to praise God the way they normally do it. And right there, immediately help came their way because the prisons were shaking, foundations were shaking, it was as if it was a great earthquake, and all their chains were loosed. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. A lifestyle of worship will attract God's attention to you and it will give you divine help in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, finally, we can talk about axing. There is no way you can remove axing from the things that we need to do to attract divine help. You must ask God. We must ask God. You must ask Him. You must be precise. You must open your mouth and ask Him. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Seek Him in the place of prayer. Ask Him. Jesus said in John 16, 24, He said, ask till your joy be full. Ask till you get help. Ask till everything that you want comes your way. Keep on asking. Ask without ceasing. Keep on asking. Ask and ask and ask God for divine help. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Finally, just before we go into prayers or practice allies, asking God in the place of prayer, I want to speak to anyone watching or listening to me and you have not surrendered your life to God. You see, it is very crucial for your survival for you to have Jesus in your life. Because his blood will set you free from destruction and death. You need him. It's crucial for you to have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you are heading for destruction. Like a lot of people have said, a life without Christ is a life of crisis. You need Jesus. Jesus will give you peace. He will help you. He will support you. He will defend you. He will make a way for you. He will show you the way. You see, he was the one who even said in John 16, 24. He said we should ask to our joy before. Amen? So I want you to go ahead and surrender. Don't be thinking of, oh, what my friends say, what will this say, what will that say. I will not be able to do this, I will not be able to do that. It's for your own good. You come unto Jesus so that your life will have a meaning, your life will be better off. You will be sure of a glorious life and you will reign with him on the last day in heaven. So you can do so right away. All you need to do is to say these prayers after me, believing in your heart, and you will become a new son or daughter of God. Pray and say, Father, I come to you just as I am, and I ask for your mercy. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. I am sorry for all my sins. Wash away every of my transgressions with your blood. Tell him you pray that I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And today I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Pray and say, Father, write my name in the book of life. And from right now, come and be my Lord and my Savior and cause my life to be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. You said that prayer. A big congratulations to you and I welcome you to the family of God. You can reach out to us. We can tell you more that you need to do. So please, I invite you as we go ahead now to ask God for divine help. I will lead us in prayer. Wherever you are, join us in prayer. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come before you to ask for divine help. Please send us help from above, even as we look up unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in our specific area of need, please send us prepared and empower the helpers to take us to a place of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I pray that every divine helper that you have prepared for us, your children, by divine providence, let them find us expressly and without delays in the mighty name of Jesus. By this reason of our divine help has come in our way, my Father, my God. Let our levels change positively and grow gloriously in the mighty name of Jesus. Let our helpers locate us. The helpers you have prepared from far, from near, in all areas of our lives. Let them locate us in this season of Ebenezer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, please. Turn every of our shame.
to glory by the reason of your help in our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord God, that your light will shine in our lives and our lives will begin to show forth your glory. We will become a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Let it be so for us all in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank you and appreciate you for being a part of the broadcast tonight. Thank you for joining us. I believe that your help is coming your way. More than you can imagine, you are going to receive helpers. You are going to receive divine helpers. You receive compassionate helpers. You receive every type of help that you need for your joy to be complete. This season of Ebenezer, your hallelujah will be the loudest because your help shall be the greatest in the mighty name of Jesus. Be expectant, trust in the Lord, hope in the Lord, look up to God and not unto man, and you will find your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, I encourage you to be your brother's keeper or your sister's keeper. Share the video for others to listen and to be blessed. And by the grace of God, I'll come your way next week and we'll continue in the final um, and the final chapter of this series, God, my helper. Do have a lovely evening. God bless you all. Shalom.